Hey guys, welcome back to the Rust API tutorial. My name is Tensor. In the last video, we set up our database pool and we also set up some static routes. Today, we're actually going to build the framework for our API to allow users to input and output JSON to perform CRUD activities on our data. And we're also going to add a little bit of error handling and stuff like that. All right, so we've already seen how we can add some functions to the routes using rocket via this mount function and the routes macro. So now we want to create a sub module called routes. Inside of this routes file, I'm going to bring in db connection as db connection. I'm going to bring in rocket contrib json. I'm also going to bring in super models book and new book and I'll bring in saray json value and we'll talk about each of these items as we get to them. The first feature that we want to implement for our API is the ability to pull all of our data out of our database and look at it. So we're going to put this on the route of backslash books and our format is going to be of course application JSON. The actual function itself will take in our DB connection and it will output a JSON with a value wrapped inside of it. So this value is this serrated JSON value and then the JSON type is the type that's coming from rocket contrib. And the reason why we're wrapping this value in this JSON value is so that we can serve this value from our handler directly. So if we were just using this array JSON value, we wouldn't be able to serve it directly from our function and we'd have to write a bunch of other things to make it work. We already have a method that's attached to our book model that will allow us to query all of our books out of the database. So we just say let books equal book all, and then we pass in our connection. And then we can actually build the JSON by calling a JSON function, which is coming from rocket contrib, and then a JSON macro, which is coming from Sarai JSON, and passing in the two fields that we want. So we want status, which will be 200 if this works, and then we'll have a result, which will come back with our books. So this will come back with a huge vector filled with our books. So basically we're calling a get request on books and then we get back our application JSON and it will be in a format that's very similar to what we've actually written here because of this macro. The next function that we want to write is a new function. So this will allow us to create a new book which we can then insert into our database. Our declarative macro will be post and this will also be on the routes books. Our format will also be application JSON and we'll have a variable embedded inside of our macro called new underscore book. In our function, our new book is a JSON type wrapped around a new book type. And of course we need to pass in our database connection and this will again pass out a JSON wrapped around a value. Inside of our JSON function and our JSON macro, our status could be book insert and we put our new book and we call this into inner function to actually force our new book to unwrap itself from the JSON structure, so it'll become a new book value. And we also pass in the connection. So this is actively inserting our book into the database. Then our result is calling book all with connection and then getting the first book out of our database. That way, every single time we put in our books, we'll actually get back the book that we've put in. If we look at our model, we also have a method that allows us to query our books by ID. Let's make a part of the API that will let us do this. So to query our books by ID, we want to do a get method on the route books ID with the ID being the variable of our actual ID of the book and the format that gets returned will be application JSON. And again, for show this function, we're going to pass in our DB connection and then the ID of the book that we want to fetch out of the database. And this will pass back JSON with a value wrapped inside of it. This function is slightly more complicated than the other two above it. We have to first get our result by calling book show with our ID and connection. This will pull our book out by ID. And then we want to check the status. So we want to see if our result is empty or not. If it is, we'll make our status into 404. Otherwise, we'll make it into 200. Then we'll take our status and we'll put it in the status field of our JSON. And we'll put our result into the result field of our JSON. And for our result, we'll called get zero so it gets the zero index value just in case we have multiple books with the same id for some reason we'll pull out just one of them we also have this update by id function so this allows us to update a book by id with our database so we also want to create an api endpoint for this particular function we do this by creating a put request on books id of course the format again is application json 
and our data, so our variable will be book. This function will be called update. We'll pass in our database connection, our ID, which comes from the route here, and then our book, which comes from the data that we're passing into the JSON. And this book will be a JSON new book. And of course, we're gonna be returning a value wrapped inside of JSON. If you remember, our book update by ID function gives back a Boolean type. So we wanna say let status equal if book update by, and then we pass in our ID, a reference to our connection, and and then book dot into inner to unwrap it from the JSON. And if the book exists in the database, then we get back 200. Otherwise we get back 404. And then our JSON will just pass back the status with a result of null. So in this case, we don't actually need to pass back the book that we've altered. We could, but we don't actually need to. So we're just going to pass back null for a result. And if the book was altered, we'll get a 200. If it wasn't, we'll get a 404. We have a delete by method inside of our models. This allows us to delete delete by ID. So we also want this function to be in our API. In HTTP, the delete is just a delete request and we'll just call it on books backslash ID. So we'll get the ID of the book that we want to delete from the route. And this delete function will take in our ID, which is an I32 and then the connection and output a JSON value. And we want to check to see if the status again is a true or false value. So we want to check to see if book delete by ID comes back with a deleted book. And if it does, then we've deleted it and we pass back 200. Otherwise, we pass back 404. Again, for our JSON, we don't really care about the results. So we're just going to pass back null. And for the status, we'll put in the one that comes back from running this method. And I misspelled this method by calling it delete with ID. It's actually delete by ID. The last piece of functionality that we have for our database is the ability to query books by author. So this takes in our author string, the connection, and it outputs a vector of books. So it can output multiple books. And of course, we want to have this functionality on our API as well. We'll create a get request on the route books authors with our author inside of it. So this will pull our string directly from our route. And then we'll have our format be application JSON. And then the actual author function will take in that author string from the route and then the database connection and pass back a JSON value. And the actual JSON for this function is fairly simple. This is like our other get request. We're just gonna pass back a status of 200. And then our result will be all of the books that we pull out by author by calling the book by author method with our author in it and our reference to connection inside of it. You might be thinking, well, what happens if, for instance, with our get request up here, we pass in something that doesn't exist in the database. We're always passing back this 200 result here, and we're doing the same for the get request down here. And this shouldn't be a string, by the way. We're always passing back this status 200. And while we do have checks with this one, this one, we don't have checks with these other ones. Well, this isn't a problem with Rocket because we can actually generalize what our 404 error will look like. We can do this again by using our declarative macro. In this case, we just call a catch and then we want to call it 404. So every single time a piece of JSON comes back with a 404, then we'll run this function not found, which will return a JSON value. And our error will just be JSON, JSON, status error, and then reason, resource was not found. And you can literally change this however you'd like. Now we have all of our routes. We want to mount them onto our rocket function. And we also want to make it so that it will actually catch our errors as well. So for our API, we want to mount this on a different route than our index route. So we're serving static files through our index route. Our API will have its own route, which will be backslash API backslash version one. And then all of the other routes that we created inside of our routes module will be based off of that. So this will be the index of all of those other routes. So for instance, if we wanna call our index function, we call API backslash version one backslash books, and we do a get request on that. Now we also want to bring in all of our routes. So we do a glob import of our routes, and this will fix the error that we were seeing before. So we're mounting index new show delete author and update on this API backslash version one backslash. And then for our not found, our 404 not found function, we can mount it by using this macro called catchers inside of this catch function. And this will naturally set it up so that for both of our routes here and here, when we get back a 404 error, it will serve out that piece of data for us. Okay, so now that we're done, we can compile our project and run it with cargo run.
And of course, compiling our project will come back with this configured for development message, which shows where the actual app is located on localhost 8000 and where we are mounting all of our functions. So we have a get request on API version one books. We have a post request on API version one books. We have a get request on API version one books ID. We have a delete request on that same route. We have a get request on API version one books author and author. And we have a put request on API version one books ID. And and it also shows you the names of the functions that are mounted on these different routes. It also shows us our catchers, so it's catching the 404 error, and then it says Rocket has launched from, and it gives us our localhost 8000. So I have this handy little tool called Postman. This allows us to do some JSON queries, and I've opened up Postman and I put in localhost 8000 API version one books as a get request. And if I hit send, you'll see here that we get back the two results that we had from before. So this has two books in it, both of them are the same book because I guess they got copied though they have different IDs and you'll see that they're inside of our result field and they're listed as a list and then we also get our status with the 200 on it. If we want to run a post request to add a book to our database we can click here go to post and then we can open up this body here and click on raw and then actually write in the JSON. In this case I wrote in a title, an author, and a published value and if I click send you'll see that we get our result which gives us the result with the author, the ID, published, true, and then it gives us our status which is true in this case which means that it got posted. And we can see this by calling a get request on our API version 1 books route again. Having this copied book is kind of annoying me so now we can call a delete request on localhost 8000 API version 1 books number 2. So this will get rid of ID 2. I click send and it gives us back a result of null with a status of 200 which means that it actually should have worked. And I can go back to our get request and we can see that in fact it did work and it removed that copy. So say we want to update one of our books. We have to pass in the title author and the published. Say I just want to update the published. Maybe I'll make this false. I'll just uh, call this on API version 1 books number 3. So this is the third ID. And if I hit send it'll come back and say status 200 because it should have worked and it will give us a null result and we can get our book by ID and you can see here that the published field did change to false. Our last request is the get request on API version 1 books authors and then you put in the author name. So you don't put in quotes or anything even though this is a string. And I know this is a little bit messy, but we just send it in and then we'll get back our result. And inside of that result is a list with our JSON book format. So it has our author, our ID, our published, and our title. And if we had multiple books by the same author, we would get those multiple books as well. All right, guys, so that's it for our Rust API. Tomorrow's tutorial will focus on building a front end using Elm. So we're going to set up an Elm environment that can query this API and it will be able to fetch all of the information from our database base in a proper very elm style way. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them in the box below and if you disliked it then by all means downvote it as much as you like. Have a good night.